So what is this magical ingredient that adds pronounced rye flavor? Wonderful aroma and saturated color helps your dough rise higher, improves bread's crumb stability and overall texture. It is fermented red rye mold and it's pretty impossible to get it here in North America. So I'm going to walk you through on how to make it yourself at home. You will need rye berries, a bowl for soaking your grain, a thermometer, a baking tray for sprouting, a multi-cooker with a yogurt feature or a stove with a proof feature for fermenting, a stove and a baking tray for drying, a sieve for removing sprouted tails, a storage container, and about a week of your time. After washing and removing broken and imperfect pieces, soak your grains for six to eight hours. Additionally, to increase percentage of sprouted grain, after four hours of soaking, rinse your grain and add hydrogen peroxide to your soaking water for the remaining four hours. Best temperature for soaking and sprouting is 16 to 17 Celsius to mimic spring-like condition and to keep growth of the unwanted, at the moment, microorganisms at bay. When six to eight hours are up, rinse your grain, place it on a tray, cover it with a wet paper towel, and place your tray in a room with a temperature closest to 16, 17 Celsius. Sprouting should take from two to four days. Occasionally, do visit your grains, and if necessary, spray them with water to make sure they don't dry out. Grains should be moist, but not submerged in water. The sprouts should not become longer than the grains themselves. And if they have, don't worry, they're still good enough. Our second task is fermentation. We are going to ferment our sprouted rye for 24 hours at temperature of 48 Celsius and 48 hours at temperature of 60 Celsius. If you have a multi-cooker, use the yogurt feature. If you have a stove with a proof feature, Cover your tray with foil, place it in the oven, and set your temperature. At the end of the first day, you will start to see changes in the color and aroma of your rye berries. Lactic bacteria are naturally present on the surface of all things. When combined with ideal temperature and moisture, a perfect environment to proliferate is created. And as a result of reaction between maltose, glucose, amino acids, and polypeptides, all from your grains, you get melanoidins and other aroma-forming substances. Time flies. Three days of fermentation have passed and it's time to dry your grains. Simply place them in a baking sheet lined with foil, no need to cover, and send them in the oven with a temperature set at 80 Celsius. Drying process should take about two days. If you have to leave your home, turn it off and turn it back on when you get back. You will know your grain is dry when you try to break it in a half, it snaps. At last, our last step, preparing for storage. We need to separate dehydrated sprouts from our grain. If you leave them on, they will make your future bread bitter and unpleasant. So, take a handful of grains, place them in the sieve, rub them with a spoon, take to remove sprouts, and place your grains in a storage container of your choice. Ideally, Freshly made red rye mold should rest for three to four weeks, ideally, but you can go ahead and use them now. Now, would you like to know how, when and where to use your new magical ingredient that will make you a bread baking star? Stop by again at our favorite destination, Rye Avenue. Thanks for watching.